Good morning, sports fans. Welcome to the channel. My name is Saad Shah, and today we're going to look at the basics of particles and fusion. If you're new to fusion or new to particle systems, this would be uh, the right tutorial for you. We're going to just talk about some very basic concepts here and get you up and running. Well, not really running, more like get you up and crawling. First things first. What are particles? Particles can be a swarm or a multitude of small objects or sprites. And these uh, can be anything like snow in this case, snow here, uh, smoke particles, light effects, and even you know swarms of birds and stuff. Particle systems exist in real life already. You can, you can see them all around you when you're walking down the street. You'll see Christmas lights right now. That's just another example. And then there's particles uh, that are more creative and abstract in nature uh, that you can create with uh, different softwares. We're just looking at some images from the web, open source images from Pixabay and so on. So how do we create these uh, and give them animation and so on? This is what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and open up Fusion. Now, first things first, we're going to define what kind of project settings we're going to use. So go ahead and hit Shift 9. This will bring up uh, project settings for you. I'm working in 1920, 1080, 30 frames a second. You can do the same or you can choose whatever you want. Okay, so how do we create particles in Fusion? The first thing we're going to need is a particle emitter. And it's right here, this little button. So this would be... Uh, one of the most common ways of creating particles. There's a couple of more things, the particle image emitter and the particle spawn options. We're not talking about that right now. We will down the road. In order to create particles in Fusion, you need the particle emitter node. Let me go ahead and turn off this toolbar and I'm just gonna use the shift spacebar PEM. And there it is. Now we have the node that creates particles. Let's go ahead and view this. And if we throw it up in the viewer, nothing happens. And the reason is, even though we can see that it's uh, visible in viewer number two, we still can't see it. And the reason is, it's one of the few nodes in Fusion which uh, cannot render by itself. It needs a little help. So in order to render particles, Coming out of this emitter, we need another node, and that node is called PRender. So let's go ahead and pull this up, PRN. And now we have a renderer node. Let's go ahead and hit 2 on the keyboard, and this is going to render the particles in 3D. As you can see, this is full 3D, not 2.5D. This is actually fully functional 3D space. So this is how you would create the basics of particles in Fusion. Particles created in Fusion are by default in 3D. So now that we have particles, let's go ahead and zoom in and look at them. So this is what it looks like by default. This green thing, this spherical round green thing, is the region from which the particles are emitting. And right now it's in this shape and inside those white dots, those are the particles. Let's, let's do a couple of basic things just to help us along. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a 2D composition. Let's go ahead and hit shift spacebar and MRG for merge. I'm going to take that and i'm going to show you something interesting click on the p render node and over here you can see that the output mode right now is 3d we're going to take the output of this and we're going to connect it to the foreground here right now it's not doing it because it needs a 3d merge not a 2d merge so how do we take care of that let's view the merge and then connect it to the uh, foreground input. And now it's automatically turned into a 2D. Now that we have that, let's create a background node, a simple black background. And we can pipe this into the background here. And 
this is going to allow us to see the particles a little bit clearer. And then we will pull up a media out node, which we had by default. And we can view this right here. And this is what your particle system looks like by default on its own with no changes done yet. So now that we have our particles created right here in the middle, let's start with some basic operations. First thing we're going to do is we want to change where the particles are being created. So to do that, we're going to click on the P emitter node. And as we can see by default, the emitter's shape is this uh, spherical shape. So we can make this larger, smaller, and so on. And we can change the shape altogether. To do so, in the P emitter nodes um, options, you have these uh, tabs on the top. The first one is called Controls, Sets, Style, Region, and Settings. We are going to spend most of our time between the controls and the style. In order to change the region of where the particles are coming from, we're going to go into region. Once inside the region, we can decide what kind of region do we want these particles to come from. So for instance, if you choose all, the particles will be available and created in all directions. If you choose sphere, that would be the one that we had by default. And there are some other options as well. I'm going to choose rectangle. And this is going to give us particles in that uh, small square. Let's go ahead and increase the width all the way across our composition. And I'm going to increase the height as well to about this size. So this is where the particles are going to come from. Next. How do I affect the shape of the particle itself? There's tons of different options I can choose from. To do so, let's go into the Style tab. And right here on the top, the Style tab gives us the options of what we want the particles to look like. By default, it's going to be on Point, which is this small particle. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now you can see that these particles are these tiny little dots. Okay. And this green outline is a, a view control uh, to change the scale and rotation properties of whatever node you have selected. We're going to go ahead and turn that off by hitting Show Controls. So we don't need that right now. Zoom back in. So here's our particles in the default shape of point. Now, let's change the shape to blob. And now we have a similar shape, which we can increase in size by going to this option here. And now, as you can see, the particles are much easier to see. Interestingly, the bitmap option is where if you choose that, it gives you this input option where you can pipe in an image as a particle. Say you had a logo or a, an icon that you wanted to turn into a particle and uh, spread all over the, the screen, you could do that by clicking on bitmap. In this case, we're not choosing that. We're going to go to ngon, which gives us options for these shapes. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick this circular one. Now that we have our particle in a circular shape, first thing I want to do, as you can see, there are too many of them, is affect the size of the particle. So let's go ahead in the style tab inside size controls. I'm going to choose 10 as the size and three as the variance. The variance is going to tell the particle system that they're not all the same size. And next, I'm going to change how many particles I want uh, in my composition. So to do that, I'm going to go into the controls tab, the first one. And there, the first property that it gives you is the number of particles. I'm going to change this to, say, 0 0.1. And that's going to reduce the number of particles that I have in my composition. Number means 
this many particles generated per frame. So if you had this, say, one, it would generate one frame per second. And if you were on frame number 74, you would have 74 particles on your screen, provided that their lifespan or their, uh, the duration um, while they're active or visible is long enough. So I'm going to change the number of particles to 0 0.1, and I can always increase it as I'm developing the composition. Next, I want to change the color of these particles. Right now, by default, they're white. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back into the Style tab, and we have the color options here. I'm going to choose a blue color, uh, about like that. I'm going to give it a little bit of alpha transparency. And then down here, we have two more options, color variance and color over life controls. Now, color over life controls means that the color will change as the life goes on for that particle. So um, I'm not going to change that right now for this particular composition. But I will give it a little bit of variance. So just to increase how much other color values affect the particles, I'm going to expand the variation of that blue color. Next, I want these particles to animate. I want them to move. If I hit play right now, they're just being born in a spot and they just stay there and then they die. So I want them moving a little bit. So how do I do that? Let's go back to the uh, controls tab for the, the particles. And in here, you have an option for velocity. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of velocity to these particles, say 0 0.01. And this will start making the particles move for you. So right now, by default, there's a very small velocity being added to the particles, which is giving them this very slow movement and they're all moving at the same speed so you can change the speed at which they're all moving so that there is a little bit of variation some of them are moving faster than the others and you would do that with velocity variance now that our particles are moving you have a little velocity one thing i noticed is that they all pop up and then pop out so there's this very sort of abrupt way of being born and then dying. And, and I want to change that. How do we do that? Let's go back to style. And here you will see a fade control. So what this is telling the particle is that you want it to fade in as it's being born. And you want it to fade out as it's dying. Let's look at the... The screen now. And this is much more, much more soft as they're coming into view. Now that we've faded the particles in and out, let's add a little uh, image to the background. So I am going to bring in a loader, shift spacebar LD. And here's my loader. And this automatically opens up this window and allows me to choose uh, media. I'm going to choose this uh, free image of Bokeh. And I'm going to connect this to the output and that will automatically create a merge. Now, right now it's a little too bright. So I'll click on merge and I'll go to the blend properties of the merge. And I'll bring this down a little bit just so that it's in the background, just to give our particles some context of what the overall composition is going to look like. Now, one thing I noticed is that this whole thing is playing by a little too fast, and there's no repeat here. So I'm going to go to the edit page, shift 4, and right click on the clip duration and change that to 10 seconds.
There you go. Back into the Fusion page. And now you can see that the composition starts at zero frames and goes up to 299. So that's 300 frames, 10 seconds, 30 frames per second. And on this side, on the right side, this display is showing me the number of the frame that I'm currently on where my playhead is. Okay. Let's go ahead and rewind and play it from the beginning. The next thing I want to do is that these particles are dying a little too quickly. I want everything to be very soothing and slow and sort of a background. So what I'm going to do is go into the particle emitter and I'm going to change the lifespan of these particles. And right now, the lifespan for these particles is 100 frames. I'm going to change that to 200. So I want my particles to stay alive and in the picture for 200 frames before dying. And I also want to have a little variation to that life so that not all of them are born at the same time and dying and on the same frame. Okay, this is looking much better. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of blur to our particles. And how do you do that? It's in the Style tab on the bottom. Just remember that adding blur is going to make the composition run a little slower just because it is uh, computationally a heavy effect. We're going to add a little bit of variation to this blur as well. So, we, so not all of our particles are blurry. This will allow us to have a little variation in the blur on some of the particles, whereas the other particles will be sharper. Next, what I want to do is I want it to blend in with the background a little more and not be as powerful as it is right now. How do I do that? I'm going to click on the merge that is connecting the particle system to the rest of our composition. And I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. So some of the particles, the ones that are more transparent, will, will show through the rest of the image in the background. And I'm also going to go to the settings tab and bring down the blend a little bit, just so that the particles are a bit more blended and faded in rather than in your face, sort of. Next, I noticed that when this composition plays from the beginning, from frame zero, there is no particles at that time. They come into the view as time is passing, as the frames are going by. And I want some of the particles to be present in the frame on frame zero. How do I pre-generate these particles? To do so, go into the renderer node, and in here, you'll have an option of pre-generating frames. I'm going to change that so on the first frame of the composition, I still have some particles in the frame as if the particles started generating 60 frames ago. So that's what that does. Next, I'm going to, as my composition is developing, I'm going to make a couple of notes for myself on how to work faster with, with uh, particles. So let's pull up a sticky note by typing NTE. And in here, I'm going to make a note for myself and say, turn on blur. Okay, so this note, let's, let's give it a name. And I'm going to call it render notes. Okay, turn on blur. So this is a reminder to me that I need to turn on the blur when I'm done making this composition right at the end. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to turn off my blur just so it can run a little faster. And if you want to see the difference, so down at the bottom here, it says playback 14 frames per second right now. Let's go ahead and turn on the blur and see if that made any effect. So now it's about half of that speed, about six frames per second, as you can see. As you're working with particles, you might want to turn off some effects just to see the composition work a little faster while you're creating it. Also, 
I'm going to right click on this uh, transport controls bar and click on high quality. This will turn off the high quality resolution of my viewer so that I can run the composition a little bit faster. As you can see now, it's back to 15, 14, 15 frames a second. Okay, next, I want these particles to move not just from left to right, but also in the opposite direction. How do I do that? Let's go back to the emitter and go to velocity. And in the velocity, I can give it some variation. Let's go to 0 0.05 as my variation, and this is going to give me motion in both the directions. Okay, this is looking pretty good so far. You know what? Just because I like film grain, I'm going to add a little finishing touch here. And just to give it a little bit of character, I'm going to turn down the blend a little bit more. That, that's good. And there you have it. Basic particle concepts of age, color, movement, blur, regenerating, the region, and so on. In the next tutorial, we're going to build on these skills and create more complex particle compositions. Let's go ahead and render this and see what it looks like in its finished form. And there you have it. Your first particle system in Fusion. All the basics covered here. Um, and I will put this file up for download if you want to use it, uh, both the Fusion composition and the video file as well. Hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Happy compositing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.